I can share with you my top three hip clearing drills that certainly help me get my hips to rotate more on the downswing into impact. And this helps me with more power, better striking, and overall better dynamic movement in my golf swing. And it can help you too. So tip number one, you need a second golf ball. So I've got the ball I'm hitting down here on the ground and I've got a second golf ball. Now I'm gonna use this black roll of tape, not the golf ball, because if I use the golf ball, the launch monitor won't trigger. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this roll of tape down on the ground and it's opposite my trail foot and it's about a foot in front of my trail foot. So it's almost halfway between my trail foot and the ball. And the game with this little bit of tape on the ground is to try and feel like you're gonna hit that tape with your trail hip on the downswing before the club hits the ball. So if you're someone who struggles to get your hips opening, clearing, rotating through, and it's causing you horrible strikes and lacks of power, what we tend to see is the club tends to kind of hit the ball and then hips are going a long way second, ground first, quite slow, undynamic movements. So this visual aid of having the second ball for me, the tape down here on the ground, is gonna allow me to think that's what triggers the hit. So I'm really gonna try and trigger the hit on the downswing to make my normal backswing, but as I start my downswing, I'm gonna try and fire this trail hip basically forward and forward as this one goes forward and around to feel like it lines up with that take before my club is hitting the ball, giving me better clearance into the ball with my lower half. Often for golfers, having this real visual kind of clue down by the ball, just visual key, if you like, to try and change a movement pattern is way better than just trying to change a movement pattern. So a couple of demos, feel like that hip is basically moving out to hit. So if it hit that tape, it would kind of move it towards the launch monitor and then try a shot. You'll find it absolutely starts to snap you in the lower half. So as in lead leg, my left leg tends to kind of snap back, the foot tends to snap back. You can really feel your hips having to go quickly and early to get to that tape before your hands or the club is getting to that ball. Now the beauty with this drill, I've got my 50 degree wedge here and I'm just gonna hit a few kind of easy 80, 100 yards or less pitches out there. So I've got the same drill and I'm just gonna hit a little three quarter pitch, but the same idea, I'm gonna try and get my lower half and body turning and that's dragging my strike so much more ball than turf with the lower stuff, where lots of people with the lower stuff do get a little bit static and just crash the club. So you can use it with your medium iron, you can use it with a wedge hitting pitch shots. I use this drill myself, I use it with students because it absolutely gets them waking their lower body up. And you can also do it with a driver. I absolutely do this with the driver. So to try and get my ball speeds, club head speeds moving fast, I'm totally trying to get this pocket really hitting this tape and second ball for you, literally as far as I can, as early as I can, to try and get the more speed into my shots. Oh yeah, so simple. It's two golf balls, it's activating your lower body and it works with nearly all your shots, transforms the way people get their lower body moving. Tip number two, get your lower half working, is I want you to get your lower half working before you've even started to swing. This is something I do now so much more than I used to, even to a point where, where I film my swing, I'm amazed at how unsquare I am as I start my shot. So what I mean, if you watch me hit a shot here, you're gonna see me shuffling back and forward, but also what you're gonna see me doing is my hips are basically opening, closing, opening and closing as I shuffle. And if you notice carefully from where I start, I basically start from a very open hip position. I am trying to influence how I use my lower body in the downswing by changing what I do with them before I even start. Because what I've noticed as I measure with Swing Catalyst on the floor here, so it, it measures all the pressures in the ground, to move those pressures at the times you need to move them, you've always got to do it way earlier than you think, meaning just feeling like you're gonna start pulling down and changing how your downswing moves. Like, it can work for some, but it's harder. Doing things backswing and pre-swing for me and for lots of students really changes the order of their golf swing. So think about this, if I was gonna jump this way, so I'm gonna try and jump this way. Okay, and I'm gonna actually try and go 360. So I'm, look what I did, to, so I'm gonna try and go all the way back round on the mat here. Watch the movement I do before I go. I don't start here and jump, watch what I do. Oh, I go that way, to go round this way, I'm loading to push, to go. So I'm having this preset, oh, 
to try and get around. I need to stop doing that. I've had vertigo as an adult. It's horrible and doing spinny things. Oh, I'll stop doing it. And just get up now and try that at home. Do a 360 jump on the floor. Look which way you go first to try and get your body to spin a certain way you go the opposite way to begin. It's like taking a run up. And I want you to start doing that in your practice swings. Don't worry if you don't take it to the course. I understand some people might find it a little scary. I don't, I, I'm doing it on the course. This by kind of, I didn't even realize I was doing it so much until I really started recording it. But what I want you to do, a bit of shuffle, lead foot, back foot, lead foot, back foot. So lead trail, lead trail. But at the same time, lead hip forward. So go this way to warm up. And then before you hit your shot, open up to bring back to try and open up again. Just take it to the range. Don't take it to the course. If you're scared, I get it. You're gonna notice your distance just changes. You tend to be way stronger. Your strike changes. You tend to go ball then turf so much more. If you're anyone who struggles with strike, this totally moves it forward for so many golfers. And you start to feel just how unenergetic, undynamic, so many of you are in your lower bodies where often you're trying to hit these kind of takeaway positions. This stays really static. You go, oh, hit the ball and then do your like pretty follow throughs, making weaker shots. And again, those kind of sclaffy strikes. Definition of sclaffy, rubbish strikes, ground first, messy, not very nice. Again, what I love about this drill is you can use it with nearly all clubs, driver as well. I can really open up try and push my speeds, push my hip turns. So I'm gonna really go that way. Try and get my speeds increasing. This is a range idea. I mean, you can take it to the course. I do take it to the course. It's a little bit more subtle. You'll have to watch closer. You can see me moving, but it's there. And I notice before I start the swing, I'm very much 100% this side to go back and then back through. Do I do it with wedges? Yeah, a little bit. I definitely do it a little bit. I'm lead foot to start and kind of staying there, less movement. But if I, when I was struggling a lot with my chipping, it's something I did loads more. I would preset to really try and pitch through and get there earlier. So I preset open to push, to then push open to get, again, my body waking up. So much pitching and chipping faults come from people just kind of pushing their arms straight down the line, trying to hit a straight shot and not getting these nice connected body movements that often create a much more neutral, inoffensive hit of the ground. And number three, I want you to try and get your torque values on the ground a little higher to get the hit clearing. So think of torque values of how much my feet are pushing this way and this way on the ground. If you imagine we have kind of these shifts, we go this way or this way, but we're also pushing in the ground this way and back this way, forward with this foot, which then makes us push back. So really simple drill to use with this one. I've done this for ages now, and it really helps my hips wake up. What I do is I start with my lead foot ahead of trail, and I'm just literally gonna pick the heel up. I'm gonna load that heel up on the backswing, so really feel like I push this down, like literally just squash the ground with this. And then on the downswing, I'm gonna try and jump off it. So I'm gonna push back and let my foot just push way back. I don't hit shots this way at all. I do practice pre-shots this way to get the feeling of my lead hip going towards the ball, if you like, so this way to then push back more aggressively. And it's that idea that really helps me and students get loads of hip clearance. So again, it's a pre-shot kind of idea, lead foot forwards. Just gonna let that heel come up or start with it up and then downswing. I'm literally gonna start pushing in as hard as I can and let the ground do what the ground does, which is kind of push you back. Cause you're gonna notice when I hit a shot, really trying to get my torque values up nice and high. Notice how my lead foot just snaps back. It whips way back. So all I'm doing is loading it more in a practice swing to get the feeling of more pushback from the ground. And that exaggeration of movement is what then allows me to make a more connected swing when I hit the ball, but feel the same forces. Because I'm not trying to load this foot up on the backswing with my full shots, but I am trying to load it up on the downswing. I'm trying to really push into that ground to get out, to get my hips moving. Remember your hips don't turn unless the ground helps you. Just imagine dangling from a rope, no feet touching the ground and trying to get your hips to turn independent of everything else. Be so hard. You need the help of the ground. So use it, let it help you. Do the practice swing where you load it up and then apply those feelings, those thoughts, translate them onto a shot. 
And this is something you can do in the garden, in the nets, before you play on the practice area, to try and then put these actions into your swing to help you get some better hip turns. Now what I like with all these movements, clearing your hip doesn't really make you always strike the ball way better. For lots of golfers it does, but they still need a little bit of help. And if you want a bit of help with your striking, this video here is helping so many golfers.